we naturally anticipate that everyone's not going to be really happy with the EPA, uh, but at the same time, we want them to understand that uh, we are real people uh, implementing real laws, uh, and, and uh, we want to work with them and keep the communications lines open. More than 100 farmers and ranchers gathered in Nebraska cattle country this week for an informational meeting with regional officials from the Environmental Protection Agency. In the northeast Nebraska town of West Point, EPA representatives explained the latest enforcement policies and practices for controlled animal feeding operations, or CAFOs. You know, we want to see the facilities that are, that are closest to water and, and are they having any impact. Over the past two years, EPA has gradually ramped up aerial surveys of mid-sized animal operations in the Midwestern states of Nebraska and Iowa. The agency's aerial photography, including potential effluent runoff violations, was a point of emphasis throughout the meeting. This was a, a basin that was um, over, over topping or overflowing uh, its berm. This is just another feedlot issue we had with the uh, feedlots. Uh, runoff coming off the selling basin down to, to a tributary right here. Federal officials argue aerial surveillance reduces the occasional implementation of on-ground inspections for CAFO operators that don't have blatant violations. We found that it's very cost effective and it's also a very good way to see the uh, enormity of those CAFOs that are really doing the right thing and, and don't really have a lot of problems and we don't have to spend time then uh, with our inspectors working with those. It allows us to really find those uh, CAFOs that may need a little work and a little direction and invest our time and our energy in, uh, in those CAFOs. But increased aerial surveys have drawn concern from dozens of rural ranchers wary of on-farm privacy. With some of the pictures that they showed tonight that showed some of the things that they do find, I think people realize that it is probably a legitimate thing for them to do. But we still have concerns that they're, that they're looking in on us, that, that uh, that uh, Uncle Sam is watching us, all, all the time watching us. In the majority of instances, you're taking photographs of someone's home in addition so. to a business facility. That's very different than some of the cases out there where you're taking photographs of just a chemical manufacturing plant. Uh, and so I think that that's a very broad interpretation of what privacy rights we have, especially from the government. This is a commercial operation that's being photographed. So, I mean, we can, we can argue about the case law, but EPA is on pretty solid legal ground so far as the ability to do this. Have you actually now, litigated a case? where a CAFO and their home on the property has been evaluated as part of the case-by-case -case analysis to the privacy rights? Well, no, it hasn't been litigated, but uh, I guess we'd be looking for a case, but, I, you know, we're not really, we're not focusing on the homes. We're focusing on the feedlot for a minute or two, and then we move on. So, you know, to try to characterize it as though we're focusing on the home and invading privacy rights associated with activity in or around the curtilage of that home, um, I, I think that's a mischaracterization of what we're doing here. Representatives from EPA Region 7, based in Kansas City, Missouri, urged farmers and ranchers to broaden dialogue with the environmental watchdog. Many attendees urged EPA to understand the often variable conditions farmers and ranchers operate under. But there are times of the year that you have to realize we could come into a chronic wet period a week before planting. We can't we can't pump or we can't get rid of our water because we have to plant. If we don't plant, we won't have a crop that'll take the nutrients out of the soil. And sometimes there's not going to be any way around it. That is just the way it's going to happen. Chuck Fulkin, a cattle rancher from Lee, Nebraska, acknowledged the rural meeting was a critical step forward for EPA, but he urged agency officials to take the farmer feedback further than regional headquarters. We hear that there's a lot of regulations that are going to be proposed on us that are coming from Washington that haven't even gotten here yet. And I hope that EPA communicates what they've heard here tonight and takes it on to Washington. 